Hello everyone, my name is Austin and I'm doing my presentation on Lev Vygotsky and his theory of social interaction. I'm going to give you a little bit of background information on him that pertains to his career in psychology. Lev Vygotsky was born on November 17, 1896 in Orsha which is in Belarusia or current day Belarus. He was born into a non-religious middle class Jewish family and he attended both public and private schools. Vygotsky was admitted to the Moscow State University through a lottery system which was used to meet a 3% Jewish student quota. While he was there he studied law but he also studied at the non-degree granting self-funded University of Shemyavsky People's University. Although Vygotsky studied law, his interests were in the arts and mind. Vygotsky graduated in 1917 and returned home to civil war and German occupation in Belarus. There was no information about the years when he when Germany occupied the city, but it seemed to open his eyes to social influence and interaction. He was part of a, of the major social transformation under the Bolshevik rule and became a representative of the Bolshevik government from 1919 to 1923. Vygotsky spent the remaining years of his life studying and researching psychology. He had reoccurring health issues which held him from doing some of the things he wanted to do. Vygotsky died at the young age of 37 on June 11, 1934. Even though he died young, Vygotsky gave a lot of good information to the psychology and education fields. Following his work in politics, Vygotsky began researching psychology in 1924. He accepted the invitation to come work at the Psychology Institute in Moscow in 1925 as staff scientist second class. He also was a local instructor and worked at some of the education sites in his town. Vygotsky made a trip to London to give a lecture on teaching to deaf students by using his social learning theory. He dedicated much time and was considered a pioneering psychologist with major works in six volumes over ten separate years. He covered many diverse topics including the origin and psychology of art, development of higher mental functions, relationship between learning and human development, concept formation, interrelation between language and development, and play is a psychological phenomenon and he was one of the first psychologists to study learning disabilities. Okay, Vygotsky's theory of social learning or inter social interaction deals with this and this is a quote from him. Every function in a child's cultural development appears twice, first on the social level, then later on the individual level, first between peers and people, second inside the child. Definition of social learning is students and all people develop cognitive skills by forming connections between social and cultural experiences. Both people own experiences and those they learn with others. And as you see here, there's a man fishing and he's holding his son, teaching him how to fish. And there's also a man there showing his son how to do school work. And as you see, he's kind of pointing things out for him. Social learning in simple terms is interacting and observing others complete tasks is easier than trying to learn by yourself. Social interaction develops skills beyond basic elementary functions. Elementary functions are defined as functions you know how to do from birth, such as breathing. And Vygotsky really wanted to try to use this to develop into higher level thinking. 
and he thought by observing someone do a task, getting assistance and positive encouragement, you could receive help until the task could be completed alone. And the good thing about this is individuals will always have different social and cultural interactions and that will result in different social learning. Everybody comes from a different place. An example of this is Vygotsky's learning theory. Um, riding a bike is a great opportunity to describe this theory. A child learning how to ride a bike shows that people can learn through social interaction. Children see people or their parents riding a bicycle or may have even previously ridden a bicycle. Since a parent is usually a positive mentor, the parent teaches the child how to ride a bike with training wheels. The parent coaches the child and practices with the child until that child is ready to ride without training wheels. The parent encourages the tr child to try to ride the bike without assistance and will eventually take the training wheels off. With coaching and the confidence the child gained, the child rides the bike without the training wheels. Now that child will go ride with friends or friends will purchase bikes so that they can ride together. And that's social learning and so social interaction. As you see there, you see the father toting his son on the back for the first bike ride. You also see father pushing the son with the training wheels helping him. You see a father and his daughter with the training wheels off, showing her how, coaching her. Finally, the bottom right, you see the little boy going on his own from his dad. Vygotsky felt that children should develop cognitively through social interaction, which is always changing. He thought there was a great value to assigning your children to use strategies to further their mental capacities. In this theory, children should develop a relationship between thought and language. Children don't have internal speech at a young age because they don't understand language. Children should develop an internal language roughly around the same time they start to go to school. Students learn from social interaction, culture, and differences. Seeing and being around different things in different cultures helps mental development. Here are some important components of Zygotsky's theory. The zone of prox proximal development, or ZPD, is a difference between what a learner can do without help and what he or she can do with help. This concept was developed during the last two years of Vygotsky's life. This zone will ensure students are at the proper level and learn the proper material. Next is important of culture and cultural interaction. And this is kind of what we discussed before with children. It still applies through all ages. It is very important for the learner to have a positive role model or mentor. It is also very important to have rich language in the classroom. It helps because children develop an inner voice which ultimately helps in mental development. Language also grows with us and that allows us to develop higher mental functions such as problem solving skills and being able to think abstractly. Language plays a critical role in developing more complex relationships and learning. And finally, internalizing ideas. We see people learn by imitating, then imitating and understanding, then internalizing that understanding. And this means for education that we as educators need to recognize how students will internalize a concept by having us as mentors and by having our support. You will slowly remove support until the student internalizes that concept. Stay in the zone of proximity or the ZPD. Being able to work with students while they internalize ideas will help you stay in the ZPD. This will also let you know when to move on from a concept that has been demonstrated. 
Will students always use this theory? Yes, students will always find concepts that they don't understand. Vygotsky believed that students could always continue to learn as long as there were tasks that required assistance. Another tool that educators should use is scaffolding. And this is used to guide and support learning by building on previously learned concepts. An example is to allow a math student to use a calculator or mani manipulative until they can complete the task with no assistance. Once they've showed that they've learned this, they can move on. And this is an example of a classroom that Vygotsky would be proud of. There's an optimistic teacher. There's collaborative learning and active learning. Working as a group to learn instead of classic education or lecturing lets students work with pairs or small groups so they can learn through self or discovery of others. They can then bounce ideas off each other, which gives them more learning. An optimistic teacher is important to be a positive influence and can give students hope or confidence to get through the task. Active learning, which you see here, is seeing students actively participate and actually enjoy learning. And Vygotsky would not recommend a pessimistic teacher or passive learning. As you see here, there are some students in the class that are falling asleep, their heads are down, and it's one person standing in front of the classroom teaching. This opens us up for some questions. Do you think Vygotsky's theory of social learning is accurate? Would you use this theory when planning your instruction in the classroom? And do you think virtual school or homeschool students experience enough social learning? If you want to respond to those questions, please post a comment or put them in the blog. Thank you.